Hi everybody, um, my name is Mary Mitchell and you may or may not have seen some of my uh, paintings or acrylic pours on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, I belong to several groups and um, today Facebook is down and uh, I'm like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> I hope my, my group's out there. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, you know, for the good and the bad with Facebook and Instagram, you have to admit, uh, I, I miss you all. <laughs> anyway, I'm in my kitchen and um, I was multitasking today, uh, making stew and um, framing something. I had a lot of requests from people about how I do my frames. So, sorry. Um, so, I'm going to do this um, YouTube. I'm a little camera shy, so uh, uh, forgive me uh, for if I mess up or uh, don't come across well enough. I hope I do. Uh, this, this, I'm going to zoom in uh, soon um, on this canvas. Uh, this actually, this pour I did, uh, and it's a canvas um, pour that I put resin on, and I ordered this uh, frame from canvasplace.com, um, this particular frame. I'm gonna walk you through everything. I'm not gonna be looking at the camera when I do that. So uh, I just wanted to introduce myself and say hi to all of you really awesome artists out there. You give me inspiration, you give me joy, you give me just so much happiness with seeing what everybody does and I mean, I just love, I just love it, and the creativity that abounds, especially with acrylic pouring, it's just, uh, and how far you can take it, and how versatile and flexible it is, and all the things you can do with it, it's just, uh, to me, just opened up so many doors for so many of us, all, millions of us, I'm sure. So, uh, without further ado, I just wanted to say hi. Uh, we're, I'm going to be walking you through how I frame this and uh, how I do the back specifically uh, because I got a lot of requests and this is the unfinished part. I'm going to be walking you through all of that, okay? And uh, I hope that you get some use out of this and uh, it's through my own research uh, and Googling and hopefully I can condense it and maybe save you some trouble from tips that, of things that I've learned. Um, take care, everybody. See you soon. Bye-bye. Hey guys, so here's the picture that I'm going to be putting a dust cover on. I already fixed it to the frame, and um, I'm going to cover that in another video, but right, this one takes up uh, of me putting on the dust cover, so here it is. Um, enjoy. Hey everybody, okay, here we go. This is the double-sided tape that I'm using to, um, you'll see that I do have it on a, on a few of the sides already, and I'm just gonna show you here how I put it on. I use my hands to do it. They, they have a, a tape dispenser gun, sort of like a trigger thing that you can use, and honestly, this is just so much easier, and you have a lot more control over it. The gun's okay, I'm sure, if you, have a, a large piece, but this is this is perfectly fine, and um, it comes out a, a lot straighter line. I just find it to be easier uh, than using the tape dispenser gun. Um, useful, but but in this case, uh, it, this is works fine. Pressing it down, pressing down the um, the tape, so it's really on there, and uh, about to take off the backing. Um, to expose the tape so that eventually it will, uh, I'll be putting the dust cover on, you know, over it. So I'm taking off the, the, uh, the tape cover. Now you'll notice that I have already fixed this canvas to the frame. I did another video of that where I uh, framed my grandson's painting. Um, and I cover that in his in that video. I realized that uh, this is a sort of a more of a uh, how to put a dust cover on your frame. 
once you've already had it have it attached. Attaching it is a whole nother ball game or or tutorial. Okay, so now I have the tape on all sides of the painting frame. This is my dust cover. It's Scotch brand. You can get it anywhere. I've seen it at Walmart. I've seen it on Amazon. I've seen it on, you know, your art supply stores. They have uh, all different types of dust covers. This is a, a very basic one uh, made specific. Well, it's made especially for this. So, so anyway, um, now I'm just going to roll the paper out measure it. I'm going to flip it over because it's uh, easier to, to we'll lay flatter that way. Now I've seen people, I've seen tutorials where they lay, uh, they lay this over the painting. I'm going to lay the painting on top of the paper. I find for me uh, that it comes out um, straighter that way. I guess it's just the artist's preference here and this is how I do it. You have to go with what works for you, and uh, this works for me through trial and error so far. Who knows, maybe that'll change at some point, but for now, I found this works. It stays straight, uh, less wrinkles and, you know, uh, kind of um, problems like that. <clears throat> so I'm about to trim the paper now down because um, now I have to trim it with a, I bought a Logan uh, I guess it's called a frame, a paper trimmer, I forget, as a razor device and um, to trim the paper off the the back of the frame. Uh, it works beautifully, really, really works nicely. It um, It's very precise. You just follow the directions. You, you, you press the... Um, you'll see me. You can't see it, unfortunately, too good in this recording, and I'm sorry that I'm not... This is my very first recording. I have done two now, and uh, it's not as easy as it looks, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, so right now I'm just pressing the paper against the frame to make sure it's on there good. Um, and, um, and then I will fold the paper over. Well, I'm gonna flip the painting back onto the pad so that uh, the painting is, you know, so that the back is exposed and I can then trim it. Um, so here I go, ready to turn it over. And once you do that, you fold the paper, press it, fold it over the frame. And when you get your trimmer out, don't be too intimidated by it. It really is, um, it's not that bad. It, it's not bad. You, you, will, you will get used to it. Just be careful. It's a razor. There's a safety, there's a safety um, part of it that you have to screw to, to, uh, dis to expose the razor. And then as soon as I'm done, I put that safety piece back that blade slides over as you can see, you'll maybe be able to see it and uh see yeah, I'm pointing to it so I'm screwing it unscrewing it I'm loosening it so that the blade is showing there and on the edge the corner so when I hold that up I hope you press it against the frame you hold it sort of upright almost like you're oh how do I describe it like you're, you're going to be cutting into something, but you're going to hold your arm up and you're just going to press down the way you see and really just make sure that that's nice and flush against the side of the frame and that you have, you're pressing down in a, in a decent way, a uh, firm way is what I'm trying to say. And, you know, don't go crazy. You don't have to dig into it. It's not going to hurt your wood. Just apply the appropriate amount of pressure to so that you get a nice clean cut. And um, and you will. It works. It really works beautifully, and it's nice. It comes out nice and straight, and just the right amount into the frame, so that there's just a, a a piece of it, a piece of the frame, you know, the edge of the frame showing. Uh, which is also why I paint the under part of the frame too, so that it's you know anything to make it look as neat as. Oops, there we go. Yikes. Uh, went off the thing there. Okay, back on track here. Uh, so just going along there and um, making my 
making my trims. Now I'm about to peel the part, the excess off. Comes off nice and clean. And uh, just going around and lifting it up carefully. Uh, sometimes you'll get a little, some stubborn pieces of some paper there that you just actually just roll roll off with your uh, with your finger. You'll see me do it actually as I lift the paper off. There's some sometimes a little bit of stubborn paper with some tape on there, and you just kind of take your finger and roll roll it off, and it, it comes right off. It's really, uh, you could probably see the the edges there, very very narrow edges, but very straight. And there you go. You can see that's a pretty good shot of it right there. Nice and nice and neat. Uh, really works well. So there that is. The dust cover's on. And now I have to attach the, the hardware, the hanging hardware to the back. I bought a lot of it on Amazon. Again, you can probably get it almost anywhere. So here you're going to see me uh, with my tools. I've got my screw gun. I have a screwdriver. I have the felt uh, stickers that go at the, to the bottom of the painting because that's the, the bottom part sits against the wall. So it, you know, just protects the wall. Uh, those are my D, my D rings, my D hooks that you're going to uh, uh, thread your wire, picture hanging wire into. I use plastic coated. I, it, for me, I, I just like that so much better. I, I won't use anything else. I, I know I don't do this for a professional. Uh, I'm not a profession. So there's the top, there's the bottom. Uh, that <clears throat> I'm determining how far down the painting I want to go. Um, I'm putting my felt tips at the bottom to guide me uh, that uh, that's the bottom of the painting because I obviously can't see it. So I want to make sure that um, I'm going less than a third of the way down when I fix my D, my D rings, my D ring hooks, where I put the wire through, because you know, they say to, to go down a third of the way of the painting. I don't adhere to that. That's not how I do it. Um, this, you know, again, it, it's a matter of taste and I just prefer it so here I'm going to go down. Uh, it's I'm just measuring it, trying to see which how far down I want to go. I eye it. I really do. This just gives me an idea of of how. I think I go four up four inches or four and a half inches on there. I think yeah, something like that if I remember correctly. And so now I'm just kind of rid in a very rude, crude way, just uh, taking my screwdriver and making my mark in the. Um, probably have a marker would be the, the best way, but I'm putting my D-ring on it and um, I'm using the outer part because there's two holes that you can screw into, you can, if you want to, uh, you know, use both of those holes on the D-ring. I'm only using the one. These D-rings hold up to, I think, 43 or 45 pounds. The other ones that I'm holding up, those are too small. So I use the more heavy-duty ones because it's pretty heavy painting, actually. Uh, so I'm using, I'm putting the flat part of the D-ring down against it because you'll see the D-ring is just ever so slightly curved, the top part. Very, very subtle. So you put the flat part down and uh, I'm putting my screw in my screw gun and I'm going to go where I marked my my mark to where I'm going to screw my screw the screw in uh, to the middle of the you know I want to go into the center of that uh, the width of the frame there so I'm I'm looking feeling it with my fingers and and that's where I'm uh, putting the screw in and that's what you'll see me doing here whoops got away from me there and it's uh, just putting it in there uh, screwing it in make sure it's um, decently using my screwdriver to make it tighter because I want to have more control over it. Uh, how It's just, to me, a better control, and uh, that's what I like. I don't want to go crazy into the wood with a, with a screw gun, <laughs> crack the whole thing or something. So anyway, we're good. That's uh, I'm ready to put the other one on, the other D-ring on. 
Okay, so I did that. Uh, there's no sense in showing that the same way I did the other one. And now I'm ready to thread the wire, the picture wire through. So this picture wire, as I said, or frame, uh, yeah, picture hanging wire is plastic coated. I wish you could see this more close up, but I do have a, a brief close up of it. Again, trial and error. I'm threading it through the D-ring and I'm I'm threading it through and then I'm going around the wire and then I'm going back through again so that I'm making like a slip knot. And then I'm going to wrap the excess around the wire, you know, around and around and around. And I know you must have seen this. It's um, It looks like a noose. <laughs> and that's... Uh, you know, you just, that's, that's what you, that's how you do it. You do the slip knot, it keeps it firmly in place as opposed to just sliding it through and then, uh, and then going around the wire. The slip knot really helps it stay in place better from what I, from what I, my experience of doing it, like I said, trial and error, and then Googling also, uh, as I always do. So, so that's, uh, there's a close up of it. Okay, I hope you again uh, can see it well enough. And uh, that's what it looks like. It's, it's ready to go through to the other side. So I'm gonna pull it through. I'm gonna pull it over. I'm going to measure. I like it nice and taut. I don't like a lot of slack. So that's what I, how much I've decided to, to, to keep and then, and how much excess I want to keep, how much excess I want to, uh, have. It just depends what, uh, what you want, you know, give yourself enough in case you want to change the, in case you want to change the length for any reason, maybe give yourself more slack. Um, you want to have a little bit of, uh, a little extra wire there to do that. So I'm going through it. Keeping it uh, taut, not uh, not too uh, loose. Okay. And uh, you'll see me go up, and I'm going to go around the wire, down, and through again. And now I'm going to go around. You see how it's like a slip knot, just like I said, and now I'm just going to go thread it around and around until it's... Uh, until it's all wound up, wounding it, wound around the wire. And um, because, like I said, I like to have the extra wire in case for some reason you want to change the length. You'll have, you give yourself enough that uh, you'll have. So there it is. Okay. It's uh, ready to be hung. Uh, now, this dust cover is pretty tight. I've I've heard people say, and they've commented, and I've also read that you can take a spray bottle and do a fine mist to tighten it up. I'm not going to do that. I tried that once, and it made it, it just made it look wrinkly. I, didn't, I don't know. It didn't really, I wasn't impressed with that. So this is tight enough. It's just got just the right amount for me, and I'm happy with it. You, you know, you don't see the back. It's to protect the painting. It's to protect the wall. It's just to give it a cleaner look. And and there you go. There it is. All right, so here it is. It's hung on the wall. This is not where it's staying, but I hung it so you could see how it's going to, how it's hanging against the wall and how it's, there's not a lot of space between the top of it. There's a little bit you'll see there. Sometimes that's unavoidable. Uh, just a little bit. If I, this is on one hook. If I did two, it might be more flush against the wall. I'm not worried about it. Like I said, it's not staying here. But one hook would work, as you can see. And, um, and there it is. So, I like the way this looks. I like the way it hangs. Um, and I hope you watch the next video that I did, which really should be the first video on how to attach the canvas to the frame. Thanks, guys.